China offers assistance in the form of debt cancellation grants, loans with favorable interest rates, and interest-free loans, among other things, through the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation FOCAC. Chinese aid is far less restrictive and doctrinaire, and has fewer conditions than Western help, claims Marxist journalist Martin Jock in his book When China Rules the World. Western loans that were more constrained and conditional have mostly been replaced with unrestricted, low-rate credit lines. Recognizing the One China concept is the only political stipulation China places on aid recipients. China is Africa's biggest and most powerful ally, and in recent years, it has made significant financial investments there, sponsoring a series of large-scale projects. This can be better understood in light of the announcement made by the second largest economy in the world at the conclusion of the 2018 China-Africa Forum for Cooperation Summit in Beijing that it had established a new $60 billion fund intended for the development of Africa as part of a slew of new initiatives to improve Sino-African relations. The fund, which is divided into numerous components, will be used for projects related to the Belt and Road Initiative of the Chinese government, which includes telecommunications, the building of roads, bridges and seaports, energy, and the development of human capacity. Considering that, here are $10 million projects in Africa, which are standing today and others are in the pipeline thanks to Chinese money. According to the China-Africa Research Initiative, Chinese lenders provided loans totaling $153 billion to public sector African borrowers between 2000 and 2019. At least or more than 80% of these loans were used for infrastructure projects in the transport, power, telecom, and water sectors of developing countries. Hello and welcome to the channel. In this video, we'll be presenting the massive projects executed by China in Africa, most of which are still in underway and a few already completed. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications in order not to miss out on any of our videos. 10. Port of Bagamoyo, Tanzania Tanzanian officials are being pushed by China to begin construction on the $10 billion Bagamoyo port project. About a year has passed since President Samia Soluhu Hassan pledged that his nation will relaunch the contentious development. The project was abruptly put on hold by former President John Magufuli because of exploitative terms in the contract between Tanzania and the Chinese company China Merchant Holdings, CMH, according to Chen Mingxin, the ambassador of China to Tanzania. China hopes to discuss resuming the project with Tanzanian authorities, Chen Mingxin said. She continued by saying that China aims to strengthen bilateral ties with Tanzania and is working on a number of large-scale projects there, including the $1.3 billion Standard Gauge Railway Project and the $2.9 billion Julius Nehrer Hydropower Project. Tanzania is now being led by President Samia Soluhu Hassan toward better economic and social growth. In order to put the Belt and Road Initiative BRI, into practice, our two nations are closely cooperating. We will continue our long-standing friendship and pass it on to future generations by encouraging renowned Chinese businesses to take part in significant BRI projects, according to Mingjian. In June of last year, President Suluhu declared plans to relaunch the Bagamoyo port project, albeit the real procedure has not yet begun. The deal for the Bagamoyo port was signed in 2013 by the government of Magufuli's predecessor, Jakaya Kikwit, during a visit by Chinese President Xi Jinping. The project was also financially backed by Omen State General Reserve Fund. It included a special economic zone, which was expected to attract about 700 companies. If implemented, the Bagamoyo port is expected to be the largest port in East Africa. It would have a capacity to handle 20 million TUs by 2045, 25 times the amount of cargo that Dar es Salaam port handles today. The port, to be built 40 nautical miles north of Dar es Salaam, would also dwarf neighboring Kenya's port at Mombasa, East Africa's trade gateway, located some 160 nautical miles to the north. 9. Mapuno Ketem Bridge, KwaZulu Natal. Kadzian government expects to increase economic activity significantly between itself and Mozambique, following the completion of the $785 million Maputo-Ketem Bridge. 
The bridge connects the Mozambican capital of Maputo on the northern bank with Katembe on the southern bank and reduces traveling time from Kosu Bay in KZN to Maputo from 6 hours to 90 minutes. The East Three Route Program, an initiative between KZN, Mpumalanga, Mozambique, Eswatini, and the Seychelles intended to enhance tourism, is anticipated to benefit from this cutting-edge invention. Traveling between Maputo and Kosu Bay, KwaZulu Natal's East Coast Border Post was excruciatingly difficult and was only done using four-wheel drive vehicles, said Bongani Tembi, a spokesperson for the KZN Department of Economic Development. The much-needed expansion of trade and tourism was negatively slowed by this. Tembi stated that in the past, persons without four-wheel drive vehicles had to travel a long way via Iswatini to get to Mozambique. The Maputo Ktem Bridge project involved upgrading of the N4 toll road from Johannesburg to Maputo, as well as upgrading railway lines and border posts. The bridge was constructed by the China Road and Bridge Corporation over a period of four years. The capital used in its construction was provided by China as a loan to the Mozambican government. Measuring three kilometers long, it is the longest suspension bridge in Africa and suspends 680 meters above Maputo Bay. It has surpassed the Matadi Bridge in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. 8. New National Stadium Ghana It has been stated that a new stadium with a capacity of 50,000 will be constructed for the 2023 African Games in Ghana. The $200 million project in Bortimin in the Greater Accra region will be managed by a company that has been sought after. According to Ghana's president Nana Akufo Addo, at the moment, none of the sports stadiums in Ghana meet the required standard for continental games. It is thus necessary to construct appropriate sports facilities in the country that will be able to host the 25 sporting disciplines from the African Games. I'm glad that the property needed to build the facilities for the games has been obtained and that the hiring of the contractor is still in progress. The facilities to be constructed include a 50,000 capacity Olympic Stadium complex, multi-purpose sports halls for all indoor sports, aquatic centers for swimming and tennis courts. After the games, the stadium and surrounding complex will be converted into a sports university, according to Akufo Addo. The first time the African Games have been held in Ghana. Lagos Rail Line Reuters, November 5, Lagos, Lagos State Governor Akin Wanmi Mbode said on Thursday that Nigeria hopes the first phase of a light railway designed to reduce traffic jams in the economic capital Lagos would be completed in 13 months and is accepting bidders for an expansion. The $2.5 billion project was started in 2010 by China's state-owned China Civil Engineering Construction Corp, CCECC, with plans to launch the line in 2011. However, the project has experienced delays characteristic of a nation rife with corruption and poor management. The railway is a part of efforts to reduce traffic in the port city, where some of the 21 million citizens rise as early as 4.30 am to get to their workplaces by 9.30. Nigeria has the continent's biggest economy and Lagos alone has a bigger GDP than Ghana or Kenya. 6. Addis Ababa Djibouti Railway A deal between Ethiopia and Djibouti will see them create a joint business to run the recently built Ethio Djibouti Railway. In October of this year, the 750 km railway line connecting the Red Sea state of Djibouti with the capital of Ethiopia, Addis Ababa, was formally opened. The Chinese-built project planned to open up landlocked Ethiopia further by developing new industrial businesses, enhancing transportation, and so on. After more than a year of negotiations, Mohamed Abdulkader Musa, the transport minister of Djibouti, and Ahmed Shide, the transport minister of Ethiopia signed the deal, according to the state-affiliated FANA TV Corporation. The accord will facilitate transportation, as was intended when the railway line connecting the two nations was first built. The company will be headquartered in Addis Ababa and will have the responsibility to provide passengers, freight, and maintenance services for the route, according to the agreement. The new railway line, it was estimated, will slash the journey time between the two countries to under 10 hours. Ethiopia is seeking to have 5,000 kilometers of new lines working across the country by 2020.
The electrified and environmentally friendly project will also replace a diesel-powered Addis Ababa Djibouti line. The ERC official said the close to 4 billion US dollar project was 70% financed by Chinese EXIM Bank, with the remaining 30% financed by the Ethiopian government. The construction was handled in two parts by China Railway Engineering Corporation and China Civil Engineering Construction. 5. New Nile Bridge Project Underway Thrai Minister Mustafa Madbouli directed the Transport Ministry to immediately start working on a proposed Nile Bridge project in Al Qaeda village, where a truck carrying farm workers fell off a ferry into the Rashid branch of the Nile last week. Madbouli made the directives during a meeting with Minister of Transport Kamal El Wazir and Board Chairman of the General Authority for Roads and Bridges Major Gen. Hassam Eddin Mostafa on Saturday in pursuance of directives from President Abdul Fattah El Sisi. The authorities talked about some of the national land transportation projects that are now under construction and the progress that has been accomplished. The state places a lot of weight on these road corridor projects, Mabuli emphasized, and they work hand in hand with ongoing efforts to create an integrated system of a high speed electric train network that will lead to a significant advance in urban growth. Wazer said that a committee of expert engineers had already been established to examine the proposed Nile Corridor project site and launch it quickly in order to improve access for civilians and stop such incidents from happening again. 4. Creepy Deep Seaport Cameroon In addition to the beautiful scenery, the city today has a new attraction, the Creepy Deepwater Port, the fruit of mutually beneficial cooperation between China and Cameroon. On any given day, there are numerous containers moored at the wharf protected by a 1,000-meter-long breakwater. A 10,000-ton bulk carrier docked by a tugboat and being loaded with cargo is a common sight at the port. However, just a few tiny fishing communities existed here 10 years ago. Nobody could have anticipated that 10 years later, Cameroon would have its first significant deepwater port with an annual throughput of 250,000 TUs and 1.2 million tons of bulk cargo. The transfer of the fishing community of Lola Bay marked the beginning of the dramatic change. But in the past, the port of Douala, which is the country's principal port, lacked capacity. Therefore, the Cameroonian government urgently required to construct a contemporary large-scale deepwater port with larger throughput capacity. Lolabe's location in the Kribi region, where ideal natural circumstances existed, was chosen as the site for the new port. The people disagreed on whether or not to relocate the community because it would have to do so. All of the local elders were against moving. They were reluctant to go because their families had lived here for many generations. The young people, however, were more thrilled because they would receive both new homes and a hefty payment for their property. The Deepwater Port project would also provide this small, isolated fishing community with a pleasant life and various opportunities, from its construction to its operation. 3. Mombasa Nairobi Standard Gauge Railway Project, Kenya The Mombasa Nairobi Standard Gauge Railway is a standard gauge railway, SGR in Kenya, that connects Nairobi, the nation's capital and largest city, with Mombasa, a sizable city on the Indian Ocean. The narrow-gauge Uganda Railway, built in 1901 during British colonial authority, stands parallel to this SGR. The Mombasa Nairobi SGR can connect to other SGRs being built in the East African community, according to the East African Railway Master Plan. The SGR was one of Kenya's most expensive infrastructure projects when it was first introduced, costing $3.6 billion. China Road and Bridge Corporation, the project's main contractor, engaged 25,000 Kenyans to labor on the railway. The line will be run for the first five years by China Communications Construction Firm, the holding firm of CRBC. Railway operating costs were more than revenues as of 2020. In October 2019, a section from Nairobi to Suzwa was finished, bringing the total length of the line to roughly 578.8 kilometers. The Mataraka Express carried its first fare paying passengers on June 1, 2017, Mataraka Day, and the 54th anniversary of Kenya, gaining independence from Great Britain. On January 1, 2018, commercial freight services started. Coastal Highway Project Kenya 
The 40-kilometer Mtwapa Kilifi dual-lane road is a part of the larger $7.5 billion highway project funded by the African Development Bank that will link the Tanzanian town of Bagamoyo to the Kenyan town of Malindi. Construction on that project has already begun on the Tanzanian side. According to Kilifi County Governor Gideon Mondero, a roadway connecting Africa's Indian Ocean coast could lead to new tourism-related activities. Traffic congestion along this road used to cause tourists to become stuck. The widening of this route will boost local commerce. The town of Mtwapa required a makeover. Our goal is for Mtwapa to develop into a 24-hour business hub, said Mungaro. This is an important link road between Kenya and Tanzania. It will boost trade and economies between the two countries. It will connect the East African community in terms of integration, jobs, businesses, and poverty eradication, Rudo said during the launch of the first phase of construction in Tuaba. The importance of doubling the roadways of the road from Mombasa to Kilifi and then to Kilifi has been debated for years, and the roadway had already been widened before the pandemic to allow for future work. The Mutapa Kilifi section, according to government plans, should be completed in 36 months. 1. Bui Dam Hydroelectric Power Station Project, Ghana In Ghana's Bui National Park, there is a gravity roller compacted concrete dam called the Bui Dam. The dam enables irrigation of around 30,000 hectares of land and produces 400 megawatts of power. Construction costs were revised in 2012, increasing them by $168 million from the initial estimate of $622 million. The project is owned and operated by Bu Power Authority, BPA, and was built by the Sino Hydro Corporation as part of an engineering procurement and construction turnkey project contract. The project was divided into two phases. The first phase involved thorough field research and planning, while the second phase involved building the main dam, a spillway, a powerhouse, and transmission lines. The Pong Dam and Akosombo Dam in Ghana were built to provide electricity. The Bui Dam, however, is designed to produce electricity as well as provide water for irrigation. The region's fishing and tourism sectors have also benefited from it. The dam also protects against flooding, and while it was being built, many jobs were created. Within the project region, 1,216 people were relocated in all, and 444 square kilometers of land were submerged. The project encountered opposition from environmentalists as a result of the relocation of fish and other creatures, including the hippopotamus. Dear viewers for following through till this point, here is a bonus. The next project is an upgrade project in Kenya. Jomo Kenyatta International Airport Terminal Upgrades Most airlines operating in the Eastern Africa region have a hub at Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, JKIA. The airport was planned and built in 1978 to accommodate roughly 2.5 million people annually, but over time, this capacity has increased to more about 6 million. Kenya Airports Authority KAA is actively renovating the current runway and expanding the current terminal building. To address the long-term capacity needs, a new passenger terminal and an additional runway must be urgently considered given the rise and growth of air traffic in Kenya. The National Airport's Master Plan Final Report, written in 1993, lends support to this growth. At JKIA, the aircraft traffic movement ATM has risen to an annual average of around 72,700 aircrafts, and by 2030, it is expected to exceed 195,000 aircrafts. The capacity to handle goods at present is thought to be 252,000 tons, up more than 50,000 tons just in the last seven years. Almost 45% more flights have been handled at the airport in the past seven years. In the aforementioned scenario, intervention is required to both meet the present need and plan for future expansion. The JDKIA in particular is where the Kenyan government is concentrating on improving and extending the aviation infrastructure. One of the main initiatives of Kenya's Vision 2030 is investments at JKIA, the core of the regional aviation industry. The proposed interventions at JKIA has been geared towards enhancing capacity and increasing efficiency with the expansion program, 
partly involving development of Phase 1 of the new Greenfield Terminal, GFT, and in the near future, construction of a second runway. The proposed Greenfield Terminal is expected to increase the capacity of JKIA from the current 6 million passengers per year to about 18.5 million passengers annually by the year 2030. This brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to like and comment on the video, and don't forget to turn on post notifications in order not to miss out on our future uploads.